lecture today is neonatal cyanosis. Cyanosis is a blue discoloration of the skin and or mucous membrane. It is due to the presence of a greater than 3 gram per deciliter of reduced or deoxygenated hemoglobin in blood. It is important to note that cyanosis is dependent on the absolute concentration of reduced hemoglobin. Cyanosis can be clinically appreciated when the autosaturation is less than 85%. Causes of neonatal cyanosis First of all, respiratory system disorder are the most common cause of uh, cyanosis in a neonate and uh, should be ruled out first. Airway obstruction, coenal atresia, micrognathia, lar uh, laryngomalacia, pulmonary pathology and uh, ventilation perfusion mismatch, pneumonia, pulmonary hypoplasia, persistent pulmonary hypertension. CNS disorder cause depression of respiratory drive, neonatal encephalopathy, seizure, intracranial hemorrhage. Hematological disorder, methemoglobinemia results from the oxygenation of hemoglobin molecules from a normal ferrous to the abnormal ferric state. Patient may appear cyanotic without respiratory distress and have a decreased O2 saturation with normal PaO2. Polycythemia may cause peripheral cyanosis due to decreased perfusion secondary to hyperviscosity. Cardiovascular disorder, cyanotic congenital heart disease, 6Ts, detransposition of greater arteries, Tetralogy of fallot, truncus arteriosus, total anomalous pulmonary venous contraction, tricuspid atresia, the hypoplastic left heart syndrome, Ismeninger syndrome, pulmonary hypertension with reversal of left to right shunt. Types of cyanosis Central cyanosis seen in the tongue and mucous membrane causes desaturation of the arterial of blood treatment depend on the underlying cause. Peripheral cyanosis, acrocyanosis, perioral cyanosis seen in the tips of fingers, toes, and around the lips. Causes peripheral vasoconstriction common in patients with Down syndrome due to vasomotor instability. Patient will have normal arterial autosaturation. Treatment reassuring, rewarming of extremities. Differential cyanosis, cyanosis seen only in the lower part of the body, causes interrupted aortic arc or critical coarctation of the aorta in the presence of PDA due to right to left shunt to the lower part of the body. Moderate coarctation in the absence of PDA may also cause a variable degree of differential cyanosis due to hypoperfusion pulmonary hypertension with the suprasystemic pulmonary pressure causing right to left shunt across the PDA. Reverse differential cyanosis, cyanosis seen only in the upper part of the body causes DTGGA with PDA and severe correctation of the aorta or interrupted aortic arc. The deoxygenated blood flows from the right ventricle through the aorta to the upper part of the body. Lower part of the body is perfused with the oxygenated blood from the left ventricle passing through the pulmonary artery and PDA. DTGA with PDA and suprasystemic pulmonary hypertension, the deoxygenated blood flow from the right ventricle through the aorta to the upper part of the body. Suprasystemic pulmonary pressure shunts oxygenated blood through the PDA to the lower part of the body. Hyperoxia test. The hyperoxia test is used to help to differentiate between cardiac and non-cardiac causes of cyanosis. The PaO2 is measured in the right radial artery, preductal, 
on room air and after 10 minutes of 100% oxygen supplementation. Failure to increase O2 saturation and PaO2 rises in the suspicion of cyanotic heart disease in severe forms of lung disease or persistent pulmonary hypertension the PaO2 may not increase with the hyperoxia challenge. This test has a limited utility and facility with access to echocardiograph but it may guide decision making for the necessity of prostaglandin infusion. Rule of critical congenital heart disease screening in cyanotic neonate. In congenital cyanotic heart disease, pulse oximeter screening, preductal right upper extremity saturation are compared with the postductal saturation lower extremity. A failed screen is when oxygen saturation value is less than 90%. Oxygen saturation is less than 95 in the right hand and foot on three measures, each separated by an hour. Difference between pre and post ductal saturation is greater than 3% on three measures, each separated by one hour. Decreased pulmonary blood flow in, on X ray. Pulmonary stenosis, tricuspid atresia, restrictive ventricular septal defect, tetralogy of fallout, pulmonary atresia with the intact ventricular septum. Increased pulmonary blood flow on X ray, total anomalous pulmonary venous retain, tricuspid atresia with large VSD, TGA, truncus arteriosus. How to approach to a neonatal cyanosis on the delivery room? Is there respiratory distress? If it is yes, if it is obstructed, give the patient O2, positive pressure ventilation, and patient need ENT evaluation. If there is no obstruction, give hyperoxia test. If PaO2 less than 100, most likely cardiac. If it is between 100 and 150, it is persistent pulmonary hypertension or cardiac. If it is more than 150, it's most likely respiratory, give auto and positive pulmonary ventilation. If there is no respiratory distress. If it is peripheral cyanosis, reassuring and warming. If it is differential or reverse, this is cardiac evaluation, need, patient need for uh, evaluation and uh, prostaglandin E1 infusion. If it is central, also hyperoxia test. If it is less than 100, this is most likely cardiac, patient need prostaglandin. If it is equivocal between 100 to 150, uh, this is maybe persistent pulmonary hypertension patient may need cardiac evaluation or prostaglandin infusion. Cyanotic infant, preductal, as we said, right hand or ear loop and postductal foot pulse oximeter. If it is SpO2 more than or equal to 95%, assess central and peripheral pulses, capillary refill and extremity temperature this is maybe acrocyanosis, hypothermia, poor perfusion, abnormal hemoglobin, carboxyhemoglobin, polycythemia. Patient need arterial blood gas analysis, either normal pH or acidosis. Uh, in cases of acidosis, maybe persistent pulmonary hypertension, correctation of aorta, interrupted aortic arc. If it is a pre-post-ductal difference equal or more than 3 to 5 percent, pre more than post uh, SpO2, this is right to left shunt at ductus. If it is uh, pre less than post SpO2, this is transposition of a greater artery aortic arc anomaly. If it is a pre and post SpO2 less than 95%, patient need clinical examination. If uh, there is low respiratory rate, the respiratory depression, uh, hypoventilation, or fatigue, 
if it is uh, normal respiratory rate or there is tachypnea with the respiratory distress this is parenchymal lung disease left heart obstruction of course with acidosis in this case if there is no distress or normal respiratory rate pulmonary vascularity either increased or de decreased or normal as we mentioned previously if it is increased pulmonary vascularity this is cyanotic heart disease transposition of greater artery or methemoglobinemia if it is normal or increase, decreased, this is cyanotic heart disease, tricuspid atresia, pulmonary stenosis, primary persistent pulmonary hypertension. Thank you for your listening.